Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and this is the Thursday afternoon, Monday morning podcast, just before Friday afternoon, and I... Just checking in on you. What's going on for July 2nd, 2015? Happy birthday to America. Happy birthday to woo, 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 America. Happy birthday, Uncle Sammy. Happy birthday to you. Go fuck yourself. All right. It's, 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 it's the fucking birthday of this country. And you know what that means, right? You get out there in your truck. You get yourself a big old burger. Undo your fucking top button and most of your zipper. Let that belly out. Let it walk around. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Fourth of July in Los Angeles, I will tell you, is like no other place. Seriously. Like, they, they, it's an absolute fucking free for all. You can shoot off essentially whatever the fuck you want, wherever you want. Regardless of safety. And uh, we are now in the fourth year, evidently, of the drought. Now, I knew we were having water issues. I didn't realize that it was the fourth year because uh, either I wasn't paying attention or uh, they're finally starting to report on it. So it is dry as can be, you know. Dry as a fucking white guy's torso. (laughs) Um, Anyways. So I am predicting, once again, last year was the first time, you know, I go up, I go up on the roof. I go up on the roof and I watch the fireworks, you know. I fucking put a little lawn chair down. This is the end of the day, right? I just sit up there and I smoke a cigar and I have my fucking, my Miller High Life, plural, exactly. I have a hell of a time getting back down because there's, you know, the only way to get up on the roof is by a ladder, right? So, um, but I just sit up there and I just... I just watch all of them going off. And uh, I think it was last year or the year before was the first time I saw it. I saw some something basically fireworks show worthy lit, lit off by just some jackass on a street that has a bunch of palm trees and apartment buildings. And I saw it explode and it started to go out and then it started to go up again. And we were all standing up there going, is that on fire? Is that fucking place on fire? Fortunately, it was right around the block from the fire station. And I got to tell you. I got to hand it to the uh, LAFD, the fire department. That fucking thing caught on fire. Their their, uh, sirens came on within the minute, and they were over there. The whole thing was done within, I swear to God, two or three minutes, which was incredible. And I couldn't tell from where I was at if it was a, uh, a tree or what. Don't I just sound like the awful reporter on site? No, I don't know if that's a tree. If it's an apartment or a person, but whatever it is, it is definitely on fire. Back to you, Chet. Thank you, Wilhelmina. She's a new addition, transgender. Transgender ginger from Massachusetts. Wilhelmina Burr. Wilhelmina, we just want to say how much we support what you are doing. Um, anyways, uh, so I got in. Oh, did I get into it with somebody? I think I had some good shows this week. There was no fucking problems. You know what I said to that couple last week that got offended when I got mad and I used that word? They didn't. I should have said, well, what if I said this word, which was a different bad word for another group of people? You know what's funny? You wouldn't have got offended, and you'd be standing here slapping me on my back saying what a funny, edgy show it was. Oh, Billy, you're still not over it? No, I'm not. I'm not. So, anyways, I'm going to do a little bit of grilling this weekend and uh got some family over here so you know the pressure right you take out your grill you got to make sure you fucking you're doing it right not like verzi who'll just let anybody jump on his fucking grill maybe that's the genius of verzi i don't know but i'm going simple this year i was going to do the whole fucking pork shoulder and all that and i just been so fucking busy i'm like you know what at the end of the day how drunk people are going to be do they really need anything more than fucking burgers and hot dogs I remember one year for the Rose Bowl, J-Law had smoked a pork shoulder, which evidently was delicious. But by the time he took it out, I was so shit-faced, I had already started my cigar. Like, the meal had already happened. So then he gave it to me, and I was sitting in a fucking lawn chair with a beer in one hand, a cigar in the other. And I was trying to figure out how to set down one or the other so I could pick at it. It was an absolute shit show. So, I don't know. Why go through that effort? (laughs) 
I know what the fuck I'm talking about. So, anyways, um, happy Fourth of July to everybody, and uh, I hope you have. Even if you're around the world, and it doesn't mean shit to you, you know what I mean? Like I had never heard of Cinco de Mayo until I came out here to L.A. and I actually asked the classic white guy question: What day is Cinco de Mayo? For those of you who are like me, that basically means in uh, Spanish, it means 5th of May. It's like the 4th of July. It's like, what day is the 4th of July? That's what, that's what I was. I was that person. Well, actually, no, because I didn't say the whole thing in Spanish. So I'd be like, oh, 4th of July. Right? Bill, we get it. We get it. So anyways, um, being a lover of all things old, uh, one of the frustrations of that is every day, you know, something happens. I have my old truck, 68 F100. I have my old house, which was made in the 19 fucking 20s. And uh, if it's not one thing, it's a fucking another. And some days it's both. Like today I started my day. I had to go do some um, look at some of the writing, some of the drawings for F is for Family, by the way, which is coming out in December. We got three episodes, three episodes in. It's a serialized um, theories, it's meaning basically each, you know, they, they don't stand alone like the Simpsons. So this is going to be like, uh, it's going to be like watching True Detective, except it's a cartoon and it's not as gritty. I don't know how to describe it. I think it's going to be fucking funny. So I went down there today to go look at it. So I got my truck and, um, and I don't know what happened this morning. I come downstairs, maybe because I left it on a hill. Any of you gearheads know this? I had my tarp. In the, on the uh, passenger side floor, and I go to take out the tarp. I need to wash it anyways. That's why I didn't have it on my truck, because I get my truck washed, and I throw the tarp on, and then it gets dirty. It's a long fucking story. So um, I go to pick it up, and it's covered in, like, not covered, but it's, there's a bunch of antifreeze leaked out from underneath the, uh, from the dashboard uh, area. Now, I know I have, the way the heating system works, I have a heater coil right behind my glove box that I had to replace. Now, I don't know if, I don't know why any, there'd be antifreeze in there. I have no fucking idea. I, I don't really understand the coolant system beyond, beyond what it does for the, the engine block. But anyways, there it was. It was all of that, and I had it wadded up. By the time I realized it was on the tarp, I already had it against my shirt and my pants. I had a light pair of gray pants on, and I was just like, yeah, you know what, fuck it. So I tossed that thing aside, and I go to work, and... I'm joking with people laughing. I go, I got a brand new fucking engine in there. Like, how, how could I have a fucking problem? You know why? Because the fucking thing's almost 50 years old. That's why, Bill. You get out of bed every morning, no matter how good a night's sleep you got, something's fucked up on you. Well, you're driving, you're driving you, Bill. That's what you're doing. So then I come home, right? Picked up one of my family members down the airport, fucking went out and got a burger and a beer. They make the best burgers out here in L.A., I have to say. And, uh... I back it into the driveway and I get out of the truck because I got to close the gate and I grab the handle and the fucking handle comes off on the gate. So, you know, I've, uh, I, I don't, I don't why, why, why buy things? Why do you buy shit? So then it just fucking breaks down. But, um, I didn't want to get into it. So anyway, so we got all these fucking people over here. So it's going to be really stressful and, uh, we got to figure out where the fuck we're going to put everybody and all of this bullshit. And, um, I don't know. My, me and my wife kind of kind of been getting into it. You know what I mean? She bought one of these fucking pull out fucking sofas. I remember a long time ago, Todd Barry used to do this perfect joke about the pull out bed sofa thing because they're gonna stick it in my office, right? And of course, there's no fucking room for it. There's no room for it. So now, uh, you know, I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll get rid of my desk. I don't need an office anyways. Whenever I do the podcast, I do it in the bedroom anyways, laying down on the bed. I don't need an office. You know, you got an office. You know, I'll just fucking use yours. I don't want you to use mine. No. So, whatever. Todd Barry used to have this great joke about the fucking pull-out couch where he was just going like, uh, you know, you know, he's like a pull-out couch. He goes, it's an uncomfortable couch that pulls out to an even more uncomfortable bed. I'm butchering it, but I used to always laugh because it was perfect. I was living in New York City at the time. We all had small apartments. And, you know, you'd hook up with somebody or go over to some chick's house and hook over a house, a fucking apartment. And you'd be at one of those fucking things and you'd be on, you know, you'd be a healthy, not a healthy scratch. You'd be, you wouldn't be playing the next game is basically what I'm saying. So we're getting one of those. And I haven't slept on one of those fucking things since I was 30. I slept on a futon until I was 36. Not proud of it, but I did. 
I made the sacrifices so I could scream cunt on my own podcast someday, right? So I haven't slept on one of those in a while. So maybe the technology has gotten a little better. Um, I don't know. I have no idea. But um, anyways, why do I feel like I got nothing to fucking talk about today? I'm just excited. I got the whole fucking weekend. So last week I started to talk about the Bruins and what Don Sweeney did and why they let everybody go and how I didn't understand it. And as usual, they're saying that everybody wanted like a 50-year contract like Dougie Hamilton wanted to get paid like the best defenseman in the league is what they were saying. And then evidently Lucic wanted like a fucking eight year contract and blah, 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 blah. I don't know whether to believe it. I don't know who's shot. I don't know who's not. I don't know what to believe with this fucking thing. All I know is I'm just sitting there thinking we got rid of Tyler Sagan, Johnny Boychuk, Dougie Hamilton, in Milan Lucic, all in the last three, four years, three, four seasons, I should say. So, um, I don't know. I guess we just got some goon from Philly. I don't know how that helps us. I don't know how that helps us. I don't know what the fuck we're doing. I, I'm not a big fan of draft picks. I'm a big fan of people that have proven themselves. If like you couldn't pay one of those guys, I would have kept Lucic. I don't give a fuck all you guys sitting there saying, ah, he's not scoring as much. Nobody scored as much last year. We had a brutal fucking season. So now all of a sudden Milan Lucic isn't, one, isn't a fucking guy he can build a team around. Sorry, this is like a delayed reaction. I think I was just in shock. So um, I just feel like next year when I go, you know, get the center ice package, when I go to watch the Bruins, I'm going to feel like I'm watching the Blue Jackets or some team that I never fucking watch. No disrespect to all you hockey fans out there in Columbus, Ohio. Hey, OSU fans, you guys getting a little nervous about uh, Harbaugh? There's a John Harbaugh, Captain Comeback, bringing fucking Michigan back. You starting to hear those horns playing? Listen to it. Listen to it this weekend when you're out there with your fireworks, right, and your fucking OSU championship T-shirt. You're not going to tell me that way in the distance the wind's blowing just right, you know? You're not going to start hearing, da, 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 and you guys are going to flip out. You ain't one shit. Yeah, you want shit and fucking, I can't even remember the last time you won a championship. Why would people in Ohio have a southern accent, Bill? I don't know, because it's offensive. Um, I'm hoping, here's the John Harbaugh bringing the, uh, is it John Harbaugh? I can't remember anything anymore. Uh, the fucking Wolverines back. I hope he does, because I would love to see that become a rivalry again. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, Bruins Canadians, as much as I shit on the Canadians, it's no fun when the Canadians stink. You want to beat them when they're good. Or at least, you know, their version of good now, which is, well, you know, we won a couple rounds of the playoffs. Poor bastards. Poor French bastards. Um, I'm actually going to be up there later on this month. I'm doing a gig in Ottawa, and in September I'm doing Toronto. So that's the uh, extent of my Canadian shit that I'm going to be doing this year. And um, for those of you who want to complain, uh, relax. All right? The way global warming is going, it, your country will be a fun place to tour within eight months you know so who knows maybe i'll be up there maybe i will be maybe i won't so uh anyways let me do a little bit of advertising here and see if i can get this fucking thing back on the rails uh hulu everybody for the first time ever you can now stream the entire seinfeld series exclusively on hulu that's every episode all nine seasons all streaming on hulu for 7.99 a month Visit Hulu.com and sign up to get access to all of your favorite Seinfeld episodes. Again, for $7.99 a month, you can watch all nine seasons of Seinfeld with your Hulu subscription. And the last quick read here, Zip, Zip Recruiter. Are you hiring but not sure where to find the best candidates? Well, are you? As a business owner, I can tell you that your company is only as good as the people you hire. Jeez, Bill, what insight. You mean if I hire a bunch of morons, my company still won't be good? I can also tell you that posting your job in one place isn't enough to find quality candidates. But when you're short-staffed, there's no time to deal with the dozens of different job sites. Until now, thanks to ZipRecruiter.com, um, I can post to 100-plus job sites with one single click. Why are you saying that? I mean, I know I can do it, but why would I do it? I don't have any employees. If I were to want employees, this is what I would do. Just post once, and within 24 hours, watch your candidates roll into ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter's easy-to-use interface 
plus be instantly matched to candidates from over 4 million resumes. ZipRecruiter has been used by over 400,000 businesses, and you can try it right now for free. Getting the right people for your company is so important. Try ZipRecruiter and get your perfect candidate before they go to somebody else. Today, you can try ZipRecruiter for free. I Literally, the way I'm reading this is like the way walking does the line. Like, could anybody hear a period, any punctuation in any of that? Uh, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. Again, ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. Oh, you know, this whole podcast, I'm, I've been sitting here trying to wonder what the fuck it was that I needed to talk about, which is probably why the first 10 minutes was so goddamn bad. My apologies. How could I do that on the, on the birthday of this nation? You know? So, um... Didn't the Native Americans have like a 4th of July type of thing? They must have had their holidays, right? Did we take those away from them too? You know? Anyways, fucking horrible. Let's plow ahead here. Um, I need to apologize specifically, heartfelt apologies from the lovely Nia to the person last week that wrote the, the, quite the, the hypothetical about P. Diddy and the kettlebell and 15 million bucks. It just seems so fucking random. Um, I think we were out of the country when that whole thing happened, or I don't know what we were doing, but we missed. For those of you who also live under a rock, or maybe just have better shit to do with your life, uh, P. Diddy was arrested on UCLA's campus Monday for getting into a fight with the Bruins assistant coach early Monday afternoon and later charged with three counts of assault with a deadly weapon. One count of making terrorist threats and one count of battery, making terrorist threats. What is that? I'll fucking murder your whole family. You know, this shit you yell when you're mad. Terrorist threats. <laughs> the fuck constitutes a terrorist threat at this point? Huh? Having a bottled water in your carry-on? Um, yes, you read that correctly. And yes, that P. Diddy. And then, of course, the snarky comment. He'll always be Puff Daddy to me. Oh, Sam Cooper. Um, Diddy's son, Justin Combs, is a redshirt junior defensive back for the Bruins. He's that fucking old. I remember living in Manhattan when he, when he was a kid, and Diddy had that fucking uh, restaurant called Justin's. He was a little kid. They used to do stand-up down there, and P. Diddy would come in there, and he would heckle the fucking comics. It was a brutal gig. Um, he's played in seven games combined over the past two seasons. This is his kid, registering four tackles. According... To uh, these people here, one of US, UCLA's assistant coaches was screaming at Justin on the field. And Diddy later confronted the coach and grabbed him. As a result, Diddy, 45, was arrested for assault and remains in custody at the campus jail. Isn't that fucking hilarious? Who would have thought that Sean Combs was a helicopter parent? Shouldn't you be like flipping out at like his Pop Warner game? It's like he's a man now. I don't know. Maybe it's hard to fucking watching your kid getting screamed. I have no idea. UCLA later confirmed the report and said that uh, Sean Combs, let's just use his real name, was charged with assault with a deadly weapon, with the weapon being a kettlebell, uh, a piece of weightlifting equipment for all you fucking lazy bastards out there. Um, here's UCLA's full statement. Shortly after 12.30 p.m. today, Sean Combs, a.k.a. P. Diddy, was arrested at UCLA's Acosta Athletic Training Camp. But we, already, we already know this shit. He said, I'm thankful that our staff showed the level of professionalism that they did in handling this situation. Well, how difficult was it? It's a bunch of football people. Here's a picture. Of, what, what are you doing? You know, at some point, you just got to give in to the fact that your kid's not going to make the pros. Sit there attacked in a, 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 <laughs> a fucking assistant coach. Get your goddamn head in the game. And all of a sudden, do you think he did one of those little ditty dances, you know, as he came over? You remember that thing he did where he bent over at the waist and kind of just walked up with his sh shoulders going up and down? <laughs> the P, the I, the D, the D, the Y, uh-uh, uh-uh, the fucking Diddy. Hold up. Remember that? And that guy from uh, Meet the Parents, Ben Kingsley. Ben, t uh, ben fucking, uh, ah! Ben uh, Sizzowitz. Ben Shenanigans. Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller was in that fucker. Right, he did the whole beginning thing, pretending like he was his neighbor, and then Sean Combs did his his what he thinks is hilarious that 
deadpan look at the camera and turns his head to the side and you could just hear all the white people laughing like it was the funniest thing ever. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Instead of going like, listen, Sean, Mr. Combs, I, 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 I want to tell you that sucks, but you just gotten into that incident where you're saying the gun was shines. Is that his name? Remember that guy who went to jail? It's back when Diddy was still banging. Uh, what's her face there? The chick from the Jennifer Lopez. Right? Before she was with Ben Affleck, before she was with the fucking backup dancer, before she got with the fucking... Uh, that fucking guy that looks like Latino Anthony Cumia. <laughs> what the fuck was that guy's name? What did he sing? He sang one of he sang all those fucking Oh Jesus, what the fuck was that guy's name? Piazzadora? Ah oh, fuck. It's something junior, isn't it? Freddie Prince Jr. I don't fuck. Well, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Hey, you know what? It's unfortunate. Parents, I'm not a parent, so I can say this with confidence. You know, I can say this without prejudice. Sometimes your kids just can't play at the next level. You know, you just got to you, you gotta deal with it. And they're going to get yelled at at the collegiate level because you think that assistant coach wants to be the assistant coach for the rest of his life? He doesn't. He wants to be the head coach, and then he wants to get to the pros. That's what he wants to do. And sometimes your kid's getting in the way of that dream, you know? And they, they got they got to yell at him. So uh, I don't, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb, having not seen any of the footage, say that obviously that was a complete fucking overreaction. But I will say that no terrorist threat was fucking made. Under the definition of the law, I'm sure it was a ter terrorist threat. Like, I'll kill your whole family or something, you know. I'll blow this fucking place up. Like, people used to, that that's just an expression for when I was growing up. I'll burn this, I'll burn the room down. Next thing you know, right, fucking people step off from behind the bushes and you put it on a most wanted list. Hey, here's a bet I'd be willing to make. I'm not making it, but I'm willing to make it with one person. I'll bet anybody out there a thousand dollars that at no point during this next presidential election, at no point will anybody who has a serious chance at at becoming the next president of the United States at all will they bring up old fucking Anthony Tump Monsanto there. Nobody's going to bring that shit up as they're sitting there charging P. Diddy with, with making terrorist threats. Is that what it is? And meanwhile, these guys are fucking up the whole food supply for their own countrymen. It's the biggest, like, act of treason, terrorism, whatever you want to fucking call it. Do you know they just passed a fucking law the House votes. This is how underpaid politicians are. And rich people get them into office, corporations, and all this shit. House votes to repeal meat labeling law under threat of retaliation from Canada and Mexico. We basically passed a law that was going to say that we don't have to say where the meat comes from. Yeah, so you basically have no idea what the fuck you're eating. Under threat of trade relations from Canada and Mexico, the House has voted to repeal a law requiring... Country of origin labels on packages of beef, pork, and poultry. Oh, wait. Canada and Mexico are arguing? Oh, wait. Wait a minute. Wait. Whoa. Whoa. So Canada and Mexico also have fucked up food, so they, they don't want that either? Dude, this is the end. This is the end of the fucking world. The World Trade Organization rejected a U.S. appeal last month ruling that the labels that say where animals were born, raised, and slaughtered are discriminatory against the two U.S. border countries. Oh, yeah, don't bring in your fucking genetically altered food and fuck with ours, you cunts. Uh, both have said they plan to talk to the World Trade Organization for permission to impose billions of dollars in tariffs on American goods. Well, joke's on you, buddy. We don't make anything here anymore. I don't know that we export anything other than fucked up food, Right. I don't know. But anyways, I guarantee you that um, if I every once in a while, if I read a story before I started talking about it, um, I, I, I guarantee you nobody's going to bring that up. I doubt anybody's going to bring up that Nestle doesn't think that uh, water is a human right and that corporations are, are in the process of trying to privatize water. So, you know, I don't know if it rains and you stick your tongue out, you owe them money. It's just, it's going down. It's why I was talking when I did that, that um, night of too many stars. I was joking around where I, the president should have fuck you money. He shouldn't make 400 grand a year. 
if that guy could feel good about where he's going to be at the end of his, you know, if for eight years you made 400 grand every year, okay, do you think you'd be set for life walking out in your 50s? You, you, there's no fucking way. And that they, they go around and they give those speeches after they, they're, they're president to these fucking corporations that got them in and they get a million dollars a night and that's, that's them washing their bribe money and that's how they, they, they take care of them. I don't know. I know. I'm going down the fucking... You ever notice that, guys? I'm slowly going back down the rabbit hole again just because I know. I know another fucking election's coming up. Uh, they, they won't talk about any of that shit. So anyways, what, what, what can I talk about that's a little happier than that? Um, oh, last night... I'm getting ready for another goddamn comedy jam, and uh, I um, I played for like two hours. I got fucking blisters on my fingers. I don't know if it's because I'm just hadn't played in a minute, because so I was focusing on the helicopter shit. But it was the most goddamn fun I've had in so long. Two hours in this rehearsal space, we went through all the songs that we had done on the previous ones. Uh, all these fucking '80s songs, Doctor Feelgood, Paradise City. What, custard pie what else have we done oh, and so now we're working on a new one uh i know i never tell you what the song is so um i'm, I'm getting geared up to do that again and uh, i don't know i can't tell you there's nothing more fun than playing fucking drums if you don't have a good time playing drums you're an asshole i mean i am an asshole i don't know well wait a second you know i think the problem with this podcast was i had one beer before I did it, about an hour ago. And that's enough for a guy a guy of my age, a man of a certain age. If you have one beer in the afternoon, you're done. You're done. you got to take a fucking nap. Let's end on this, everybody. Mercedes AMG. That's like their Shelby division. No, no, I don't mean to insult Mercedes by comparing them to an American car. I know how insulting that is. You know, I met some German girl, and I was talking about... Uh, I was on the road, this German woman, I was going like, oh, man, you guys got great cars. I'm like, BMW. She goes, Audi. And I go, Mercedes. And then she just rolled her eyes. She goes, it's a cab. Like, it's a taxi. Because when you go over there, like, that's what all their taxis are. So they don't even fucking respect them. Um, saying AMG will build something fast is a given. Uh, that's its specialty. But in this instance, a suitably vague teaser video has piqued our interest. Evidently, they're making some sort of V8. They don't know what the fuck it is. I'll have the link for this. You guys want to hear what it sounds like? This is their little teaser here. AMG, something fast is coming. Come on. Come on. Show me the fucking car. Oh, you know what? I'm not showing you that because that was just a waste of 19 seconds of my life. You know, fuck you. I'm glad you lost both wars, you cunts. Ah, something fast is coming. You're supposed to. You're AMG. Right? You know what? This is a complete clusterfuck. I apologize to check in, you on, in on you the way I did this week. Did I even ask you? I mean, I'm supposed to be checking in on you. I didn't ask you about anything. Like, how was your work week? You know? Are they making you work the Friday? Are they making you work the third? If your boss makes you do that, now don't blame your fucking boss. And like whoever's the shot caller, you got to figure out who who's the fucking evil cunt that won't give you the half day on the third. Right. Because, you know, business is psyched that the fourth of July is on Saturday. Oh, great. We don't have to give him a fucking day off. Fuck him. Make him come in Friday. Tell him to stay till 530. Find out who the shot caller is. And uh, I don't know. You got to you got to do something fucking stupid. You know, maybe you take whatever condiment you were going to put on your hot dog that day and you stick it under his door handle. That's such a chick, cunty fucking thing to do, but it is hilarious. Now, whatever you do, don't make a YouTube video of it and then send it to me and then you're going to get caught. Just don't do that. But I'm just saying, it's got to be something you can do. Is it considered an act of terrorism now to do the old gag where you put the bucket of water over somebody's door? You know, why did that go away? I think it was considered hack after a while, but it still is one of the funniest fucking things ever to see somebody standing there, not in swim trunks, dressed, ready to go to work and have a bucket of water go over their head. Right. It's an act of terrorism. Do you support ISIS? Um, oh, Jesus, Bill. Oh, you know, that's this. You know, it's this podcast. This was I should have renamed this podcast. Oh, Jesus. Maybe I don't have enough to talk about. You know, what it is. I got off the fucking road. Finally. Um, I got off the road and uh, I haven't had to do shit. I think I did one show this week. 
Is that all I did? I don't know. I'm gearing up for the Montreal Comedy Festival, and uh, I'm doing some godforsaken gig in Ottawa, which is either going to be amazing or it's going to be an absolute shit show. I think it's some sort of blues festival or something. I'm just picturing a bunch of bikers. You know, the only thing worse than a bunch of bikers is a bunch of Canadian bikers, you know, because at least the ones down here, they're frightening. You know, up there, they're probably all fine. Oh, Jesus. Why, why would I do that? Why would I say that before I go up there? Then they have to prove how fucking tough they are. You know, that's got to be weird, right? Joining a fucking biker gang. It's like, am I seriously going to do this with my life? What do you do? Hey, hey I haven't seen you since high school. What, what do you do? Oh, I'm an accountant. What do you do? I'm in a biker gang. <laughs> yeah, I'm making my money uh, selling drugs and uh, prostituting women. You know, you know, the office area, it just wasn't for me. I tried the cubicle thing, and uh, I don't know. Then I just started getting tattoos. It started with the, uh, you know, the classic early 90 ones. You know, I got a tramp stamp and barbed wire around my fucking arm. And then it just continued. Next thing you know, I don't know. Oxy came out, right? I was sick of crank anyways, right? Oxy came out, and then, and then here we go. By the way, did anybody see what Eddie Van Halen said this week? Eddie Van Halen, I swear to God, man, that guy is like, he's becoming, do you guys ever see that, that documentary, Be- Beware of Mr. Baker? And there's this whole thing on Ginger Baker, who uh, I'm obviously a big fan of, um, I mean, the guy just comes off as one of the most in- psychotic fucking human beings you wouldn't ever want to be around. And I hate to say it, that just watching Eddie, I'm so fucking old. I remember when he was a young guy, 25-year-old kid, just redefining the guitar. And just to watch him turn into this grumpy old man, I guess there's some sort of horseshit going on between him and the bass player, Michael Anthony. I know he's not in the band anymore. I don't know what happened this week. But Eddie basically said, like, you know what? If Van Halen fans don't shut the fuck up, I'll bring back Gary Sharon as the lead vocalist. That'll give him something to bitch about. And it's just like, Jesus Christ, dude. You had to shit on Gary? He ain't fucking do anything. How'd you drag him in? Is that his name? I don't know what the fuck his name is. It's just really, I don't know. It's like, Eddie, just go play the guitar and shut the fuck up, man. I don't understand what, what this guy's problem is. Let me see something. Let me let me get the exact goddamn quote here. Then I swear to God, I'll, I'll get out of your way. What do you care? Even though this this one kind of sucked this week, you got to admit, you know, it's a short fucking week. If you have a boss with a uh, who has a heart, you know what I mean? They let you off for the Friday. Who's kidding? We don't make anything here anyways. What are you taking a day off from? Answering phones? You know, calling up China and tell them to, to have the, the crying people in the background who build the shit for no money to shut the fuck up while you listen to uh, some spreadsheet numbers. Sorry. I have no... I'm, I'm just... I'm totally... I'm just back into this shit. All right. Michael Anthony, Eddie Van Halen. Here we go. What do we got? Something fast is coming. Can you believe that fucking... That, that was like clickbait. And when you see this car, it's going to change your whole attitude on what cars could be. Um, where is it? Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. There's so much fucking drama. Listen, this is when you look up Eddie Van Halen, Michael Anthony. This, this is this is the front page. This is how much fucking chick yelling and screaming is going on in this band. Michael Anthony says it's really sad he hasn't spoken to. I don't know what the rest of it is. Gary Sharon reflects on his three-year stint in Van Halen. David Lee Roth vents about Van Halen's future. Uh, Sammy Hagar defends Michael Anthony. Um, Sammy Hagar predicts Michael Anthony will rejoin Van Halen. Uh, Sammy Hagar defends Michael Anthony. Fuck you, Eddie. Michael Anthony, I never quit Van Halen. (laughs) Ladies. Ladies, can we just get back to running with the devil there? Can we just do that? Um, I got the greatest reality show ever. You take fucking Eddie Van Halen and Axl Rose. Right. And then you have Steven Adler play the Donald Trump role as who gets fired from their fucking band, you know, or whatever gets. Maybe I didn't have a great idea. Maybe I had it. I just thought of the people and I thought it was great. Speaking of which, you see Donald Trump got fired from his own fucking show. I actually think that he's getting paid by the Illuminati as a distraction because I absolutely fucking love this guy in this election. And I don't give a fuck what he says. 
at least he's saying something different as opposed to everybody else. Yeah, yeah, stress education, make this country great again, right? I just like that he just sounds like some fucking drunk in a bar with his simple, stupid solutions. Hey, uh, Trump, what about the hole in the ozone layer? Well, I get a ladder and I fill it up. So what's wrong with this country? Everybody's afraid to get a ladder. She's like, what are you talking about? You know, they, we can't get ladders because of the Koreans. And they're a bunch of rapists. <laughs> he literally sounds like he's like that guy at closing time where everybody's going like, oh, Jesus, is he going to puke? Let's get this guy a fucking cab. Um, somebody please explain to me how that guy's worth nine billion dollars. I just I for the life of me, I don't buy it. I really don't. So he, he's running his yap. Which is funny. He's lost his TV show and I think his clothing line at Macy's. And what's the funniest fucking thing ever is to watch the network. They'll issue statements like we don't stand by some of the hateful things that he said about Mexico, Mexicans. And it's like, fuck you. You don't stand by losing money. And people are bitching to you and they're threatening to your fucking advertisers. Quit acting like you give a fuck about about anybody. Right. Oh, Jesus. Bill. Jesus. I was so fucking negative. Maybe somebody at the network does care. Um, all right, so that's it. I already sang happy birthday to America. Hey, Canada, when's when's your... Uh, oh, I should have done it on Cinco de Mayo. Right? Happy birthday to Mexico. Happy birthday to Mexico. Bueno birthday, dear Mexico. I don't know anymore. Yo tengo pero... Wow, yo tango, pero, grease, blanco. I don't fucking know. I don't, I don't fucking know. What do you want from me? Puta? Uh, <laughs> I swear to God, I had one beer. One beer, and I'm not drunk, but I can't think. All right, there you go. There's your podcast. Just checking in on you. And we got, uh, we got some greatest hits coming up here. Uh, people, please have a happy and safe holiday. All right? Booze and fireworks don't work. But booze and your friends with fireworks definitely works so find a safe place for your drunk ass to watch them blow their fingers off or light their backyard on fire all right if you have drunk friends over do not have fireworks if you're going to your friend's house and they are drunk and they have fireworks let them do what they want it's their house just make sure you have enough juice in your phone to be able to videotape what's hap- what happens and please send it to me here at the uh, the MM podcast, and um, and that is it. All right, go fuck. No, no, go fuck. Have a wonderful weekend. God bless you. All right, you cunts. I'll talk to you later. Um, there was a lot of shit this week that fucking annoyed me. Um, on the gas mileage thing, I brought up last week how I was watching uh, the Goodbye Girl, and she was standing. One of the characters was standing in front of a fucking Subaru. And uh, it got 39 miles per gallon. And here it is 36 years later. And my car only gets fucking uh, a hybrid. Only gets 41 miles per gallon. So this brilliant guy writes in and he goes, he starts talking about leaded gas and all this fucking, how cars today are heavier. This fucking moron thought cars today were heavier than cars back in the day. You know? Like the 1959 Cadillac. I'm sure that that car was lighter than your average Toyota Camry. So anyways, this somebody sent me. Let me, let me actually read this guy's, this guy's response here. One of the many that I got um, on the gas mileage thing. It always blows my mind what people fucking respond to. So this guy ends up writing me. Uh, he goes, there are two reasons. Wait a minute. It's loading. Loading, I don't know, he gave me all these fucking reasons, and I basically responded with, so basically you're telling me, he basically said that it had nothing to do with money. It had to do with the weight of the cars and somehow the the mixture of the gasoline that we use nowadays. That's why they just can't figure out a fucking way to get more than like, better than, what's the highest you've seen? Like 40, 45? This guy tried to say, well, actually, there are things that get 100 miles to gallon. They're scooters. Ah, what a moron. He goes, there's two reasons why old cars have such highly, high published gas mileage. For one, the EPA tests simply used to provide higher numbers. 
Sir, they've been doing that right up until the last couple of years ago. In fact, the year before I bought my Prius, they were legally able to claim that it got like 50, 50, actually almost 60 miles per gallon before they cracked down on the hybrid and made them say actually 40 ones. I'm aware of the EPA test. I'm aware that they do it when there's no headwind. I'm aware that most of the test is when they're fucking going 25 miles an hour and they only drive the car 55 miles an hour for about fucking 30 seconds. I realize that the numbers are skewed. Okay? He said it's been revived several times over the decade. Yeah, so my Prius, your Prius would get like 70 miles per gallon on the old test. No, it wouldn't, sir. No, it wouldn't. It would get more like 60. That's what it did. Let's just say that it would get 70. Who gives a shit? He goes, where where am I? The second reason is safety features. Check out the weight of your vehicles. Cars have gotten heavier. No, they haven't. My Prius is not heavier than a fucking Subaru in the 1970s. It isn't. Dude, I'm old enough to remember when cars actually had metal on their dashboard. They're all plastic hunks of shit now. He goes, cars have even 15 years ago featured death traps when compared to the modern cars. No, they didn't. They've had the crumple-free zones. Those, those, no, crumple-free. They've had those crumple zones for years. Sir, in 1988, I was coming home from a Christmas party, drunk off my ass, sitting in the fucking passenger seat of a Pontiac Grand Prix. We pulled up to a red light. There was a fucking Jeep CJ7, the old school one, sitting there. All right? We saw it, I saw it, the driver saw it, but the alcohol didn't quite see it. And we just sort of went, we were slowing down, (laughs) but we didn't come to a complete stop and just completely rear-ended this guy. All right? There wasn't a scratch on the fucking Jeep. This goddamn car folded up like a fucking accordion. The engine dropped down underneath us. And I, I got, I didn't even get a boo-boo. I just sort of, you know, I didn't, I didn't have a seatbelt on or nothing. The car was designed to take 80% of the fucking impact, all right? You're sitting in your cubicle just tossing these fucking numbers out, all right? So basically my response is, I'm saying it has nothing to do with money in the oil companies. So basically what you're telling me is that nowadays I can have a video conference with somebody in Brazil while my entire music collection is in my pocket on a phone that is also a camera and a video recorder. I can upload the content onto the Internet and potentially have it viewed by every person in the fucking world, but we can't make a car that does any better than 40 miles per gallon. So fortunately, you know, everything else has fucking progressed. Except for gas mileage. Dude, I'm telling you, they have the technology to get like 500 miles per gallon. They're just not going to fucking put it out. Because that's how powerful the goddamn oil companies are. They're right up there with the banks. You got the banks, and then you got the oil company. The banks control the money supply, and then the oil companies, they control energy. Okay, you control energy, you can you control the fucking population. Do you know that they're actually out here, there's people, they're selling kits out here to have your own fucking windmill so you can get yourself off the grid. So then they immediately pass the fucking law, General Electric, that General Electric had to come around and make sure that everything was safe. They had to get their fucking noses back in there so because they can't have people disappearing off the fucking grid. You can't have people getting free energy other than the cost of the fucking windmill. You can't have them sitting there, and every time the goddamn wind blows, it it, it recharges a generator, and now I don't have to work as much. If I don't have to work as much, I don't have to go into debt. You're getting yourself off of the fucking treadmill, and they can't have that. All right? God damn it, I wish I was more intelligent so I could explain this better. But you know what? There's a great uh, documentary. I'm actually going to email this guy back. It's called The Gas Hole, full documentary. And there's they, they and they have everything from they have everything from the 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 urban myth of the water powered carburetor, which this guy who wrote to me completely dismissed. He completely dismissed any sort of uh, that 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 exists because he sits in a cubicle and I sit in a fucking bedroom, all right. And he tries to just say that's just another media hoax. Oh, you know they said Dewey beat Eisenhower or fucking like dumb shit like that. 
Okay. This so this documentary have everything from like the urban myths that the, that these uh, water powered cars existed, um, all the way up to actual a retired um, scientist who worked for Shell. Who you just have to watch this documentary. They were showing there was a book out that claimed that they could get 149 miles per gallon in the 1950s on like a Packard or a DeSoto. And by the 70s, this scientist who worked for Shell said they had gotten it up to 1,000 miles per gallon. All right? I don't know why people think that it's it's absolutely impossible to improve the gas mileage. Some people feel that. I don't know why people feel like we can't come up with anything better than the gas combustion engine. It's complete fucking bull it's the same level of bullshit as that there's an actual difference between a democrat and a republican watch this documentary the gas hole we're going to have the link up on the monday morning podcast just watch this shit and i i don't know what to tell you some of it looks like okay they, they, they have this old guy going you know and this guy showed up and he had it, it was a contraption made out of you know it was powered on water and then he claimed that Shell bought the patent, gave him a million dollars, and then he could never fucking, you know, make another one. Now, that's the kind of shit. Some old guy saying that he saw it on a salt flat in the 1950s. I'm not going with that. All right? I'm not that much of a fucking whack job. But when a guy who worked, used to work for Shell is coming out saying that type of stuff, it's just, it gets to the point, like, are all of these people nuts? You know what I mean? There's no fucking way, I don't give a shit whether there's lead and gas, whether there's not lead and gas, how much the car fucking weighs, or any of that bullshit. There's no fucking way that in, in, in almost 40 years you can't do better than two more miles per gallon. I absolutely fucking refuse to believe it. I, 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 I fucking refuse to believe it. I think it's complete fucking horseshit. It's just another way to, to keep control of the herd. Now, if you want to argue that you need to keep control of the herd or there's going to be absolute chaos so we have to keep cars down like that, I will listen to that argument. But if you're going to come at me and tell me that in 2011, okay, when I'm reading shit that in the medical field, they can now grow a fucking a new colon for somebody outside of the body. I read this, this thing on that TED.com. This woman had a completely ulcerated large intestine. So they took some sort of tissue culture, whatever the fuck that means, out of her diseased colon, used that to then grow another one outside of her body. When they were done growing it, they took the old one out and put the new one in like she went down to Midas muffler. And it totally fucking worked. Okay? Up until like five years ago, you were looking at a colostomy bag. You would have a bag of shit right under her fucking right titty for the rest of her goddamn life. Her social life would have been over. Okay? If they can do that, <laughs> you're telling me, you're still going to tell me they can't do anything better than about 40 fucking 45 miles a gallon. You're really going to sit there and believe that in your goddamn cubicle. That they just can't fucking, just can't fucking figure it out. The only way I can get like 100 miles a gallon is if I ride on a fucking scooter. You, sir, believe in Santa Claus. I remember one time I had this old piece of shit truck, right, that I drove for like 10 years because I knew I wanted to be a comedian and I didn't want to go into debt. So... When the engine finally died, I threw a new engine in there. And the guy told me he needed to rebuild the carburetor. I'm like, you don't need to rebuild the carburetor. So you know what this cunt did? He fucking adjusted the carburetor so I would just get shitty gas mileage. Hoping I would be an absolute fucking moron and then drive back and be like, well, I guess you're right. I'm just, I'm just chowing through gas here. That's what this motherfucker did at his little garage. This little piece of shit did that because it wasn't enough that he fucking made 1,600 fucking bucks off me. He wanted to make like fucking 1,900 bucks. So he did that just as a fucking individual. And you're going to try and tell me that a corporation that basically controls the world fucking energy is not going to buy up patents by people that, that, are, that, are, that are, are, are making, are coming up 
with uh, carburetors and stuff like carburetors, but, but coming up with, with, with alternate ways of powering a car more efficiently. They're not going to buy that up. Dude, they have that whole Stanley Mayer thing. And that's not a conspiracy theory either. We actually, we actually played the news clip on the Opie and Anthony show. Stanley Mayer, great news for individuals, but bad news for oil companies. Claims he's come up with an engine that can run on any type of water. Fresh water, salt water, rain water doesn't make a difference, and he claims he can drive across the country on 28 gallons of water. Um, this is of such interest, the Pentagon is sending a lieutenant colonel out there. That was the actual news clip from the Opie and Anthony show. It was an actual news clip. It's not some bullshit I read on a fucking website. Okay? Now, what happened after that, nobody knows. But basically, within 10 years, Stanley was dead and his car disappeared. And his brother right now is trying to get the car back and nobody knows where the fuck it is. All right? Um, I, I truly believe that the quickest death sentence you could possibly have is to go on the news and claim that you've come out with an alternate source of energy that's going to put a corporation out of business that is making that is projected to make three hundred and fifty billion dollars next year how much do you think your life is worth and if you have three hundred and fifty billion dollars how easy is it do you think to get somebody to solve this problem now if you're new to my podcast last week i was saying how come miles per gallon on gas, uh, on cars, sorry, has, has been, has basically been the same since the 70s? So people were trying to suggest to me that cars weighed more back in the 70s. And I said, get the fuck out of here. Those goddamn lead, back in the day, they had metal bumpers and full-size spares. Get the fuck out of here. I remember when, when we had a, we had like a 72 or 73 Buick Regal, two-door. And it took two, me and one of my brothers all of our might to open that fucking car door. It's like open the goddamn, like a bank vault. But two things I forgot to do. One, actually look up the stats, and two, realize that I was like fucking six years old when I was trying to open it. You know, you ever think that shit? When you think it doesn't, it doesn't really snow as much as it used to, which it probably doesn't, but as far as like the storms, remember you're like, dude, back in the day, it was up to my waist. Yeah, and you were about three feet tall. That's why. That's why. That's why it seems so fucking deep, because you could barely look over a coffee table. Um, anyway, so I'll give you guys that one. I'll give you guys that one, okay? And I would actually love to be wrong on this one, but I just don't think I am. Even though I was wrong that, that cars weighed more in the 70s. And people showed me a bunch of stats, because God knows I'm not going to look at them. All right? <laughs> And people, by the way, who actually said that I really sounded like a moron last week, I, may I invite you to listen to the first four years of this podcast and just see the reoccurring theme that that is. Okay? I don't read. It makes me sleepy. I've stated that before. I don't fucking read. All right? I go with my gut. Okay? I'll tell you this right now. I don't know how to fill a tooth, but I can go in and look at a dentist and, really, and I, can, I can fucking judge that guy. Whether or not he's gonna, he's he's telling me the truth. <clears throat> Does that make any sense? Of course it doesn't. Go fuck yourself. I got a goddamn hour to fill here. This is what this is the problem I have. I have with people who are defending the oil companies here is basically when you go back to the seventies, okay, and you prove to me that cars did they weigh more now, okay? So you're right on that one. But your logic though is still based in that the oil companies were telling the truth in 1976, that whatever, 35 miles per gallon was the best that we could do. So you use that as a jump-off point to then prove your point now that that's why cars get the gas mileage that, 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 that they get today. Is basically, I have to make the leap with you that oil companies are telling the truth. That this $350 billion industry, okay, that, that is... Uh, on numerous occasions, openly got in the way of any sort of progress. I remember here out in California, I think it was the late 90s. It might have been 20 years ago. I can't remember if it was before I moved out here the first time or right after I left. The, the air quality out here was so fucking horrific. 
It's like I know a lot of people still think it's real smoggy out here. It definitely gets smoggy, but usually just in the summertime. And it's definitely hazy out here, but haze is not fucking smog. Smog is brown. You go hiking and you feel a burning in your fucking chest. Back in the day, in the late '90s, okay, you could see this shit. So anyway, so they 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 put this uh, they put it to the vote for a people to the people who actually would vote on this shit, and they passed this bill that said by the year 2000, whatever, whatever, 25% or 30% of cars had to run on something other than, you know, the gas oil, basically the gas combustion engine. They basically paved the way for the big three to then basically start making electric cars. The fucking thing passed. And oil companies got together with their lobbyists, and they went and they just totally dismantled the whole thing, and the whole thing fucking went away. Okay? Which, for all you people out there who are going to explain capitalism, capitalism to me, I get it. That is their prerogative to do that. Why wouldn't they get in the way of that? So let me ask you this. You're telling me that they would get in the way of that, but they wouldn't get in the way of any sort of progress? Just with the gas combustion engine, they wouldn't get in the way of any of that type of progress. They seem to not get in the way of anything else. Safety, they don't give a shit about. They won't get in the way of that type of stuff. Burning it cleaner, they don't give a fuck about. But miles per gallon, which is their bottom line. Like, do you guys honestly think, like today, like what your car gets, like that's honestly the best that science can do? That is, we are right up against the fucking wall. Is that what you're telling me? You know? Considering if they just even increased it by 5, 10 miles a gallon per every new car, that they would immediately lose hundreds of millions of dollars. Why would they do it? Why would they do Why would they allow that to happen? Why wouldn't they get in the way of that? That's all I'm asking here. And you know something? For all you fucking assholes out there who call me this whack job conspiracy theorist, these are my conspiracies. Bankers are fucking evil. Oil companies lie to you, and insurance companies are pieces of shit. That's basically my three. And that they have enough money to basically buy elections. That's basically it, okay? Those really aren't groundbreaking conspiracies, are they? I'm not saying there's some guy living in the fucking moon. I'm not saying I saw a fucking flying saucer come out of the goddamn ocean and fucking take a piss on somebody sunbathing and then, you know, I I saw Ronald Reagan waving out the side of it, and then it took off. I'm not saying that shit. I I just – I don't buy it, okay? And I actually got emails from people. um, They sent me these uh, these, these links. They sent me this link of this this fucking kid, 14-year-old kid with one of his classmates, built this futuristic-looking Jetsons car, and they got close to 2,000 miles per gallon. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the link to this. You can go on the MM Podcast and look at this thing. MM, the MMPodcast.com. Look at the picture of this thing. Okay? And once you're done saying, well, it's not a practical car, it's not as heavy as the other ones, it would never meet the safety standards, and yada, 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 all that fucking shit. Do you honestly think that airbags, navigation systems, <laughs> crumple zones, and all that, you're honestly going to tell me that that basically knocks off 1,900 miles per gallon? Are you really going to fucking sit there and tell me that you honestly think that they're not? Why wouldn't they get in the way of it? They have the money to get in the way in the way of it. And not only that, they're not even part of this country in a way. They're borderless. They're, they're worldwide. I, I, don't, I don't know. <clears throat> so I, dis- I, I, I respectfully apologize for not fucking... Uh, looking up the way to the car. I was 100% wrong in that, but I still do not think that I'm wrong or I'm fucking paranoid. I had one guy, this guy's fucking hilarious. This guy was just ripping me, just saying this is classic old man. It's like, dude, I'm 43. Jesus Christ, this guy's going old man like I'm afraid of the world. I'm afraid of the fucking world. I have, I at least can sit here and tell you that I don't believe in all that religious horse shit. What, I, I, if I was a scared old man, wouldn't I be going to church every goddamn week? Wouldn't I be doing that stuff? Believing in the immaculate conception? 
I think you go in the ground, people. I th- you know what? That's, that's my theory. I think when you die, you go in the ground, and then you become a fossil fuel for more people to fucking fight and, 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 and uh, lie about the, the – you know, you know what? My, my, actually, my Prius, and I've actually thought about doing this. There's people – granted, it fucks over your, warrant, your, your warranty on your car. They can actually get 100 miles per gallon, but ba- and basically what they do is they just, uh, they just fill the ass in with a bunch of batteries. You know, which I'm sure those are great for the environment. <laughs> oh, you know what it is, people? I think you know what it comes down to <clears throat> the most. Why is my fucking throat so dry? Hang on a second. I think it comes down to the matter what we do, we're fucked. But I just think that there's certain entities that just have too much fucking power. I think when you start making $350 billion a year, and you're nationwide, at some point, some sort of government should have some sort of power over you. And I don't really think that our, ours does. I don't. I don't think that they have any fucking power. Well, what are they going to do? They got us by the balls. The second you start giving them shit, they put their hand on the, on the nozzle of the spigot. Go ahead. Keep talking. We're gonna, we'll shut this fucking thing off. Huh? You want to pay $9,000 for a cantaloupe? Then shut your face. 425 a gallon. Go fuck yourself. Next question. Yes, this is Armani. Um, <clears throat> all right. Plowing ahead here. I, w- I really want you guys to look at this, okay? You guys who actually fucking do research. Um, like, here's one guy. Tells me the 1987 Honda CRX got 57 miles on the highway. Weight was 1,800 pounds. The 2011 CRX. Miles per gallon is 41 on the highway, and it weighs 2,600 pounds. So I, I, see, I see their fucking argument. So right there, it's like, all right, well, the car weighs fucking 800 more pounds, which is a lot when the first one only weighed 1,800. You're, almost, you're talking about, what is that, like 40%? Weighs 40% more. Is it getting 40% less on the gas? No, it isn't. So that's actually a fucking improvement. I will give you that. But the jump-off point, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying that we can only get 50, 25 miles a gallon in 1975. I don't buy it. I bet they easily could have got 200 at that point. They're not going to do it. Dude, you're talking about the blue bloods at that point. You're talking about that level of fucking power. All right, my apologies to everybody out there who actually has some sort of science background. Evidently, people told me that that Stan, Stanley Mayer, the water power car, is junk science, and it's, it's absolutely ridiculous that someone even suggests that they could do that. Uh, so I lost on that one. So this, so you, so you guys, you guys won two thirds of the argument here with me. All right. So now that you've backed me into the corner, I want you to explain to me why oil companies wouldn't stand in the way of that technology, and and twofold, and why you believe that what they tell you that cars get is the best that we can do. Why you believe that we can't get sixty miles per gallon. Well, you know, there's 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 airbags and, and and other things and satellites flying around us. 